Blair O'Neill is better known for her start in the big break and most recently as a co-host on the School of Golf. Today we will break down the cause and effect of the golf swing that took her to a personal best of 63, was able to average drive lengths of 265 and have her longest drive recorded at 325. If you do like this type of free education, please leave a like, comment, share or even subscribe as currently we have 95% of our viewers are not subbed. It really helps us get golf in the hands of needy children and thanks to those on the screen who have memberships if you are interested. It costs 99 cents every 30 days and that money goes straight to the children but enough of that hogwash let's check out the great Blair O'Neill Golf Academy members and guests and Blair O'Neill is on the screen. We've already got the lines drawn out for you so you don't have to watch me and wait in anticipation but a couple things I want to watch with you and show you is her tilting relationship to her setup and how she maintains it but the left side we're going to look at how she loses a posture but it's almost necessary for her to lose her posture and she has a very Hogan-esque golf swing and for those that disagree let me try and prove my point but also leave the comment down below to let me know how you feel. So let's take a look at the right side of the screen first we're going to look at where that club head is in relation 90 degrees from her shoulder tilt line so barney purple is going to help us out you can already see i've determined that 90 degrees now let's go straight down to impact with my magic little tool here takes me down to impact now let's redraw barney purple in our degree line and connect the shoulder tilt at impact and extend it down through to the club head. And there is 90 degrees, and that is usually right where the club head is passing. You see the shadow right there. So she maintains that 90 degree angle from her starting position to impact. And this is why I keep telling you guys and girls, do not forward press that at the start of your swing. Do not try and cheat the system, because if you do so, now you have to increase your tilt even more at impact. And unless you have a body like Gumby, or unless you are triple jointed, it ain't going to happen. So what am I talking about? Let's go back to the address position. So the, this is what I'm talking about. Let's back this line up and delete that. And let's look at where the relationship is between your golf ball and the shoulder tilt. So let's draw a spine angle that goes right through the hands. And look at where that is. It is going straight to the golf ball. So the hands, the golf ball, the center of the chest is relation to that spine tilt. And this is how we're able to release at the same point and carry that same degree. Now, let's say you're golf ball was in that same position but your shoulder tilt was down over here while you're trying to get your hands way out in front guess what you have to do now you have to take this 90 degree from the club head to your spine tilt which would be way over there that's about 90 degrees you would have to carry that down into impact which means your shoulders would have to tilt a tremendous amount and stay down and only a few can do this so do not cheat the system but let's clear these lines up go to the left side because that's the most important line to show you how you set up correctly and for her her incorrect setup actually works in her favor. Okay, so we're going to keep both of these sequence so we can kind of go back and forth, but the main focus is our left side. Now, what are we going to do about checking where that center point is? We're going to go right to the arches of her heels and pull that straight up, and we can see that she is slightly favoring right side of her arches. Now, what does that mean? That her weighting is slightly toe heavy, and this is going to be an important thing for her and how she utilizes correctly. So she does something very unique in her first part of the backswing, and you'll notice that a lot of this, look at her hips her hips are staying pretty steady on both frames we can see this that the steady hips allow her now to get that elasticity almost immediate it's almost like she is taking her arms to a point her upper body's rotating around her hips as much to a point where her body says okay i can't rotate anymore i feel that elasticity let me now take my hips now what you'll notice is that first part is watch her head she makes a slight head movement we're going to put a little circle around her head and watch which way it goes it starts to pull back slightly and that pulling back and it's ever so subtle but that pulling back guess what it's trying to do it's trying to find the center because her body was forward a few inches so let's see if we can do a little tiny arrow over here let's zoom in I'm going to draw a little yellow line. That's kind of where her center is, and that's where her feet are not supporting that center. So there's a little gap between the yellow and the blue long line. Look at the head. Watch how the head moves back that same amount. So we can see that her body is now trying to find and let her arches of the feet support her hips where they should have been. But this is actually really key for her. Now, because when she is now going to enact her hips, so her hips now are going to 
slowly turn right when she gets that full elasticity going we see some issues now and the hands have fallen behind her right shoulder way behind her right shoulder and also behind her centeredness this blue line so we get to the top of the swing she's going to try and raise it up but it's not quite enough she's going to get a little bit more turn and look at the right side of the screen look at all that turn that we get from this position to this position so that's all shoulder turn and pulling it back now here's an issue is we see this happening we see the hands getting well behind the center of her body it's okay to get a little bit behind but because she's well behind she's actually doing a really good job of flattening her arc which is what she's going after with the driver but when it's that far behind what do you think as a result is going to happen with the body that needs to counteract that so the counteracting action is now the upper body is going to slowly fall this way to counteract some weight that's been stored on this side so we see her losing her posture slightly we see the new line we're going to draw the new yellow line right there so we see it's moving closer to the golf ball now why is that important because this sets her downswing so you see her first move of the downswing look how quick her arms drop which is very hogan-esque look at that right elbow it's getting very close to the body we can see it on the right side of the screen here we don't see much daylight there and once she comes through now guess what from this point to this point she has to now create some room so look at the legs watch the leg action going to start standing up driving the power through as she strikes the golf ball look at her angle now it's even even less so let's delete some of these lines here and redraw that yellow line so some of this is a camera issue because when you move this way closer to your target you are going to separate yourself away from the camera lens and it will be some spacing but not this severe and we can also see that her new spine angle is definitely more upright now upright is good with the driver because what it does is it flattens out your arm plane now your arm plane comes lower and guess where it exits it exits higher so let's clean up these lines now and let's take a look at where her exit path is once she strikes it look at how high her arms are versus where they were at the start of the swing they're very flat so it goes from flat to steep guess who that reminds you of hogan and if you don't believe me i did a hogan swing analysis breakdown it's somewhere on my channel go check it out if you don't believe me and hogan has this very same finishing motion because you when you go from very flat you have to start standing up to create some room and we get the drive of the hips to drive up we extend outward and we're just releasing as much as we can while we're trying to do our best to stay in our posture and what you'll see is look at the legs look at the feet on the ground look at that left foot the heels coming up look at the right side of the screen look at this area over here watch the heel the heel's going to spin around which means where's the weight going to it's going to the toes why is it going to the toes because of our very flat backswing when your arms get that flat your body has to compensate that and lean forward and where does that start from also the setup position so the setup position started a little bit more forward so the arms worked their way low and back to balance her out and that's really good because it kept her with the flat plane now she has to work with that and now she works towards her toes and standing up and for those of you who don't believe that we jump at a golf ball i'm gonna stop all the naysayer nonsense because take a look at the right side of the screen and look at the belt buckle so we see this little belt we're gonna zoom in for this one because this deserves a zoom let's zoom right into that belt buckle watch the action of the belt buckle as we take it frame by frame let's just draw a little square that's not really a square but it's close enough around that belt buckle watch what happens where's it going boom boom look at this where's it going it is way up there as we come on through now it comes back down because guess what we did we drove up we are pushing up for those that don't want to believe we jump up at a golf ball this is how you hit it far you work your way from down to up just like you're jumping up as high as you can stand up right now wherever you are if you're in the car pull over at the closest 7-eleven go get a slurpee and come on out and try this jump without bending down and you'll jump a little bit now jump while you bend all the way down and push up which one jumped further we're doing the exact same thing in the golf swing so if you are not stealing ground force that is the new coin phrase steal some ground force jump up but you have to maintain your posture too so it's not that easy and we can double down on this one and take a look at where the centeredness of her core is we draw a nice straight line that's eyeballing it as we come on do we draw a nice straight line right about here look how straight that is that is just pure rock solid that's basically her pivot point and that is her center so where is her center in her 
swing it's basically guess what was that center guess it is right by the belt buckle so the belt buckle is an indication of where you transfer that power now what holds the upper body to the lower body and it is right in your swing center let's draw an obvious varney purple circle right there what is that ladies and gentlemen and if you don't have a six pack you better start working on one because that is where the control of the power is that is constricting that is pulling because it's pulling what together it is pulling the upper body down and the lower body up it has to find a way to absorb the lower body pushing up but also hold the upper body in place which is why it is so important to work on this core muscles so much because you have to hold things in place it's almost like you're doing a sit-up but then once you hit the golf ball you just let it go and what can we tell by this follow-through let's clean up all these lines abracadabra bam just like that i love this what we can tell from here is no matter how painful it is to look at that follow-through the most important thing is just past impact there are still connected well past follow through to the center of her chest so this is why she could hit it pretty far to hit it 325 one time it's pretty impressive to average 265 270 like she did in tour events that's very impressive and this is how she did it so if you do like that hit that like and subscribe it really helps the channel grow learn from the swing learn how you use your forces your forces are something you can control and if you don't know how to use the forces based on the way you set up you are going to be in trouble so how can you not be in trouble follow us because we try and diagnose different swings to teach you how to educate yourself on your swing because there is no two swings that are alike. See you next time, Ferris and Greens.